Temperatures for January have reached record highs in a number of nations across the Europe. So just how high are we talking about? Well, national records have been broken in eight countries and regional records in three others. In Belarus, on the 1st of January, the temperature reached a record high of 16.4 degrees Celsius, more than four degrees above average. On the same day in Poland, it was 18.9 degrees, again four degrees higher than the previous record for the month. And in Bilbao, in Spain, it reached 25.1 degrees. That's 10 degrees above the average for the time of year and would be normal for the region in the summer. Well, local people are concerned about why the temperature is so warm. It's not normal for Bilbao to have such good weather. It always rains a lot here. It's very cold. And it's January and it feels like summer, you know. It's a... Uh... Well, it's pleasant, isn't it? But it's also kind of scary to know what's causing that uh, pleasant temperature. But uh, yeah, been on, vaca on vacation here. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like nice weather for biking, but we know it's like the planet is burning, so <laughs> we're enjoying it. But at the same time, yeah, we're scared. <laughs> So concern there, why are places like Poland, where the average temperature at this time is normally closer to zero, so hot at the moment? Well, here's an expert from the Institute of Meteorology and Water Management. A conveyor belt of air from the southwest has brought these temperatures about. And not just in Poland did the records reach such highs, but also in Germany and Central Europe in general. There's record temperatures in many places not recorded in the history of our measurements. In our region, the record from 1990 was also beaten by more than 3 degrees Celsius. And in Switzerland, temperatures hit 20 degrees Celsius and the warm weather's affected ski resorts across the Alps. Look, the snow is really wet. It's no longer constant. It's like in spring. The snow actually has to bind and that doesn't work with a lot of water. Well, in recent years, heat waves have become more frequent, more intense, and they've lasted longer because of human-induced climate change. However, warm winter events such as these do not have the same impact on humans as summer heat waves, which can result in large numbers of excess deaths. The world has already warmed by around 1.1 degrees since the industrial era began, and temperatures will keep rising unless governments around the world make steep cuts to emissions. Chloe Brimacombe is a climate scientist in the UK and she looks at the impact of extreme heat on crops and agriculture in different countries. We know that all of the main crops are declining and so wheat is grown predominantly in Europe and that's seeing a decline and then we have maize or corn and that's mostly in Southern America and North America but also parts of Africa that's particularly affected, bigger decline than wheat and then also rice one of the main staple foods in Asia. So the impact of these weather events. Let's talk to Patari Talas, who's the Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization. Welcome. And can I begin by just asking you, do you have a direct cause behind the high temperatures that we're currently seeing across Europe? So uh, there's a component coming from uh, climate change and there's a component coming from natural variability. And I have been using analogy to sports, if you give a sportsman a doping, uh, they can perform even at the higher, higher intensity. And we have been doping the atmosphere by injecting especially carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And that's why we have started seeing more often these kind of uh, extremes, which are intensifying these, uh, this normal variability that we, we still have. So climate change, but this isn't across all of the areas at the moment because we are expecting colder temperatures and snow in Scandinavia, in Russia, re areas around there. We're expecting temperatures to drop by minus 20 degrees by the weekend. So I just wonder what's, what, what is causing that, this huge discrepancy between warm areas and these cold areas a little bit further east? So one feature is this uh, overall warming of the Arctic uh, which has been favoring these kind of stable conditions that some parts of the world we can see very cold anomalies, uh, like in Russia at the moment, and, and uh, in some parts of the world we can see very warm anomalies, which has been the case in Western, Western Europe uh, recently. And, and, and this is uh, partly caused by the warming 
of the of the Arctic area. So the warming of the Arctic area is is this you're, you're saying this is due to climate change? Are these the wake up signs that we need to be listening to? Sure. So I think that what we have been observing, for example, last uh, last year, these extreme temperatures in Europe, uh, in China, in USA, uh, uh, extreme flooding in Pakistan, uh, drought in uh, Horn of Africa, a drought in Europe, uh, China, and USA, they are all signs uh, of uh, of the, the fact that we are moving in the wrong direction so far. And uh, unfortunately, this negative trend will continue until 2060s, and, and there's more urgency to, to cut the emissions of, uh, of especially carbon dioxide and consumption of uh, fossil fuels. And I wonder if we're looking at these high temperatures, well above average for these areas at the moment, when what should effectively be winter, what can we expect in the summer months? So uh, what happened, uh, for example, last summer in Europe, uh, where we were breaking records in many countries like uh, like UK and in, in Alpine region, for example, we saw the largest melting of the of the glaciers, uh, more than six percent uh, in one summer. So this is this kind of events are becoming more and more frequent, and uh, there's even a chance to hit the low limit of Paris Agreement, 1.5 degrees, uh, during the coming coming five years uh, on temporary basis and. Uh, more permanently the next uh, decade. Pateri Tala, Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization, thank you.